Hej. Hi, I'm Dr. Alicia Armistead. I wasn't sure if this was quite working. Um, I think I've just been talking to myself for about 10 minutes. Uh, but I am Dr. Alicia Armistead. And last Wellness Live, I talked about how what we think really does make a difference. And I wanted to talk more today about how that actually works in our body. And Bruce Lipton wrote a book called Biology of Belief, which is an amazing book. And he's a cell biologist. And he was the first one to really figure out that uh, the cell um, activates the DNA and what it expresses with the DNA is not necessarily set in stone. And we think that our DNA that we have is set in stone. And, you know, that you get half of your DNA from your mom, you get half of your DNA from your dad, and it is what it is. Uh, a lot of times we say, oh, it's genetic, like there's nothing we can do about it. But actually, our, our DNA doesn't control us, we can control our DNA, because the DNA expression depends on the environment that the cell is in. And we want to have as healthy of an environment as possible so the cell can thrive and express itself as healthy as possible. And so part of having as few toxins in the body as possible is part of having good DNA expression. But also what I found amazing was that he talks about how when we have certain thoughts in our brain, different neurotransmitters are released. And neurotransmitters are different chemicals in the body that control everything else that's going on. And so we have all these different chemical reactions. And so our thoughts are not, you know, um, neutral to the body. And we know that because we talk about how we put our stress in our body all the time. And it's not figurative. I want you guys to know it's a real thing and that we can do something about it. And so when we practice gratitude in particular, it is an expression of that releases dopamine in the body. And dopamine is the happy neurotransmitter and everybody wants more of it. Um, so it's an easy thing to do is to just have a, a system of like, what am I grateful for today? Um, and I know it's not always the easiest thing, uh, but one of the things I'm grateful for is how my, you know, my children and my family stay healthy. And you know, you can always try to find that silver lining, even though it's really hard. It's not always easy. Um, another example of how what we think makes a difference in the body is all the different placebo studies and how you can give somebody a fake medication, but they don't know it's fake and it actually has a good effect on the body, like as if the medic as if it was medication. And it's literally because the patient has decided, like, I have a medication and this medication is going to help me. Placebo is known to work a third of the time, 33%. I think that's actually a huge number. Um, it tells you how important it, what we think matters. And so what we can do to help is, is to watch our thoughts. And, and we talked about this last week. It makes a difference. And we are on such autopilot all the time. And this autopilot, I want to call the subconscious brain. And we're not always aware of what we're thinking. And if we are, they're kind of the same thoughts over and over and over again. And I want us to use our consciousness to choose uh, better thoughts and to watch our thoughts. At the same time, this consciousness is in the frontal brain and evolutionary wise, it's the newer part of the brain. It's what humans have and other animals don't necessarily have it a lot all animals are running off of subconscious, the older parts of the brain. And so as humans, we have both a conscious and subconscious part of the brain, but about 95% of our daily life and what we're thinking runs through the subconscious brain. So we are only using this 5% of the time. And if we can 
find ways to be more aware and to use this more, that's our first step. And I think practicing gratitude will bring that awareness up. Uh, that's also what mindfulness is, is bringing that awareness up. And so in the subconscious, if that's running 95% of the time, you know, we want good subconscious programming. Uh, programming is the word I use because the subconscious, that's what it does. It's like it programs. And if you put a good program in, it'll run good results. Um, and if you put a bad program in, you won't like the results. But we can reprogram it. And it's very good at habits. And it's like if you bring the consciousness and you really try to form a good habit, eventually it then becomes automatic. And that's what a habit is. And we can retrain ourselves with good habits. An example would be driving. And, um, you know, you remember learning how to drive when you were 16, or at least I was 16. And it was all really intense. And, you know, I have to check my mirror and I have to do this and I have to do that. And it was really overwhelming and it like took all your energy and you had to really focus. And eventually one day it just you know, became habit and all, it all went into the subconscious. Um, you know, as a driver talking to the passenger, you're driving and you're driving safe and you get from point A to point B and you, you know, you finish and you know exactly the conversation you just had with that passenger, but you know, how many stop signs did you have? And that's, the brain picked up on all of that because that's the only way you were to get to point A to point B safely. But it's in the subconscious because the consciousness was in the middle of having a conversation. And that's how you can, you know, multitask so nicely. But what if you have beliefs running, programming in the subconscious? And so that's one reason why I do uh, the muscle testing technique called Psych-K. And it's a way of changing the brain, uh, changing the nerves and how they're firing and being able to use words and affirmations and doing neurological changes. And so then you're actually reprogramming the subconscious. And that's why I fell in love with the technique and I'm you know, getting great results. If you can't do Psyche, okay, um, then other things that I suggest would be the affirmations, uh, not only practicing gratitude, but affirmations as in, well, what do you want instead? And telling your body, telling your brain that that's what you want, because that's at least you're programming the consciousness. And, you know, but sometimes it doesn't work because it there's something stuck in the subconscious a programming that is outdated. A lot of our programming we get um, before we're seven. Because that's where, as babies uh, develop and as toddlers, we're running the subconscious and we're just like, you know, that's why they pick up on everything. And, you know, they're getting all that programming. Um, and then about seven is when they start using their consciousness and using the frontal brain. And so sometimes that's how we can get stuck. And then that's why the reprogramming of the old beliefs is so helpful. Meditation is really important as well. It's a way to calm the consciousness and listen to see where we're stuck. And in meditating, it, it shouldn't only be about listening. I feel like we're communicating with ourselves, with our body, and in communication in general between two people, one is listening, one is talking, or at least somebody should be listening, but hopefully if it's good communication, somebody's listening and somebody's talking. And so you have, that's the cycle of communication. And when you're meditating, we should also be listening and talking. And so the first step in my meditation that I feel is so important and that I get the best results with is you know, to settle the mind, you know, try to let go of thought, but then, but and when I'm settled, go in and figure out, okay, where am I today? What is my intention? What do I want to work on? And with that intention, then really continue to still the mind and it opens up space to listen. And that's what I want you guys to know. Meditation is actually an active process of listening. And then, but then you can also ask, maybe there's more things you need to actually talk to yourself about and, um, and then listen again. And, you know, 
what do what what can I pick up on you know and it's like figuring out what's in the subconscious what lessons uh, what what can you process uh, which we can't always do when we don't turn the consciousness off. The, when you look at it scientifically, the subconscious mind processes 40 million bits of information per second. Like when we think about a computer, it's like literally processing like crazy, 40 million bits of information per second. That's why you can drive and talk at the same time. The conscious mind only does 40 bits per second. So that's why the subconscious will always win. Um, and that's why we have to be careful and aware of what's in there. Um, another concept of neurotransmitters and the body picking up on different hormones and the cell reacting and expressing in a certain way, uh, besides the bi biology of belief, is a Japanese scientist um, Ma Masaru Emoto, I call him Emoto, uh, his last name is a lot easier. He did science on talking into water and then freezing the water and then looking at the frozen water crystal under the microscope. And he saw how certain, if you talked positively to water, how it was beautiful crystals, like, you know, like snowflakes, and every snowflake is different. And if you talked negatively to the water, it would be like a mishmash, it would look like a mud puddle, there wouldn't be any crystal nice formations. And um, this is the idea that you know, what we say has a certain vibration that the water can actually pick up on. He thinks of the water as a blueprint um, that does pick up on vibrations and that vibration changes the structure of the water. And uh, all his information is online. It's beautiful pictures. And um, I want you to know that we are made about 60-70% water. So it's like no wonder we pick up on vibrations and we talk about, oh, bad vibes or, you know, I'm feeling good. And that all plays a part. Our, the, so our cells, you know, express a certain way and the water reacts a certain way is important when you think about the cellular environment. And um, the, the, so using Emoto's uh, research, uh, there's a company out there that makes glass a certain way in order to restructure the water crystals well. And so it's Flaska. I have my own Flaska bottle. This is actually my uh, company logo. And it comes in the protector because it is glass. And then this is what it looks like. And um, it may be placebo, but I really think I, um, the water in here tastes better and I end up drinking a lot more of it. So those are my thoughts for the day. Uh, the power of thought, the power of um, what you talk about, what you say really does make a difference. And so practice gratitude, meditate, um, and talk to your water, whether you have a flaska or not. Good to see everybody. Take care.